Okay, so we were talking about red blood cells and blood type. Um, and we had just kind of just gotten into our discussion about blood type, right? And what it means to be type A positive blood or what it means to be AB negative. Um, and we had just gotten a hemolytic disease of the newborn, which is extremely important clinically. Um, before we go through this though, let's just really, really quickly review blood type um, so that we're all on the same page. Remember when we talk about blood type, we're talking about the red blood cells and we're talking about antigens, right? Or identifiers that stick out from the red blood cells and identify what type of cell it is. And then we also said that the blood has antibodies and those antibodies are part of the immune system and they're there to fight anything that's not self. So anything that's not you. So if you had A positive blood, then your red blood cells would have the A antigen, and the positive means that they have what? Good job, that they have RH. So that's what all your red blood cells look like, A and RH, A positive. What antibodies do you have? B. B, right? Because B is not self. So you have antibodies to fight B. Now, what if you were, say, oh, there's a little lizard. Um, what if you were B negative blood? What antigens would you have on your red blood cells? If you were B negative, what do you have? Did I hear two different things they said? What antigens do you have on your red blood cells? B. Um, it's okay, I just wanted to clarify, I wasn't sure what I was hearing. Why do you not have RH? It's negative. Right, so the blood type is telling you what identifiers, right? What antigens do you have? So then what antibodies do you have? A, a right? Because you want to fight your same thing is not you. Why don't you have anti-RH? You don't have a nice bone. Good, you don't know it exists. You haven't been exposed. You're not born with it, right? You have to be exposed. And then your body starts to make antibodies. So if this person's blood came in contact with something that was RH positive, then they would start making anti-RH antibodies. Okay, but they're not born with them. So, all right, that's, like, that's where we start. Hemolytic disease of the newborn occurs when you have an RH negative mother with an RH positive baby. Um, now this does not normally cause a problem in the first pregnancy, but the first pregnancy can be that sensitive that sensitization experience to sensitize the mother. So um, this is like the first pregnancy. So looking at the first pregnancy, here you see the mother's blood supply. She's RH negative. Okay, so she does not have any RH antigen, but remember, she doesn't know that RH exists. So she's not making the antibody yet. This is the baby's blood supply. The baby is RH positive. So the baby does have this RH antigen. Now during this pregnancy, the red blood cells are big. So the baby's red blood cells don't cross um, the vessels in the placenta, and the baby's red blood cells are not gonna cross into the mom's blood during the pregnancy. So the mom doesn't get sensitized while that baby is in the womb. Everything's fine. Um, however, during the birth, um, there's a lot of tearing and bleeding that occurs, right? We have, it's a pretty messy experience. Um, and there's, because of all of the, the bleeding that occurs in the placenta and in the uterus, at that point, vessels break. And when you don't have the integrity of the vessel wall anymore, now all of a sudden the mom can get exposed to the baby's blood cells. So at delivery, some of these RH positive cells, you see, will cross into the mom's blood. Now all of a sudden the mom says, wait a minute, this is not me. I need to learn to fight this. And the mom's body starts making anti-RH antibodies. Um, now this takes up to months. Okay, this takes time. And by that point, the baby's already out, right? So the baby's safe, the baby's out, living on their own blood supply, perfectly <coughs> fine. However, the mom starts making antibodies against RH. So now the mom knows that RH exists and her body knows how to fight it. So here we see that, right? <clears throat> um, some of the moms become sensitized within the first six months of delivery. Okay, the first infant is not affected because again, so here we see this anti-RH antibodies, right? So the mom knows how to fight it, but the baby's already gone. 
So the baby's perfectly fine. It's not going to affect that baby. However, it can affect subsequent pregnancies. So once you sensitize the mom, the mom now has anti-RH antibodies. She can fight RH. So now the mom gets pregnant again. Again, we see the same thing, right? An RH negative mom with an RH positive fetus. Here's the mom's blood supply. Here's the baby's. Remember we said their red blood cells are too big. They don't cross. Antibodies are small. Antibodies do cross. Antibodies are small enough to cross those vessels, to cross over the, in the placenta and cross from the mom to the baby. So now these antibodies, these tiny little antibodies can cross from the mom's blood supply into the baby's blood supply. And these anti-RH can attack the RH antigens on the fetus's blood, on red blood cells. So what that will do is those will start to attack and agglutinate um, the, or clump the fetus's blood supply and they'll hemolyze. They'll start to burst or rupture of uh, the fetus's blood cells and it'll cause an abortion. So, obviously we want to try and prevent the sensitization in the first place, right? That's how we treat this. That's why when you go to the doctor, when you're, when you're pregnant, the first thing they do is ask you what blood type you are and what blood type the dad is to figure out genetically what blood types the baby can be. Um, and if you're Rh negative and it's possible that the baby's going to be Rh positive, um, then there's there can be a concern for you to you getting sensitized and then in the later pregnancy um, having hemolytic disease of the newborn. So what we do is we get something called Rogam. Rogam is an anti Rh antibody. Okay? It's like a synthetic anti Rh antibody. So it gets rid of all of the RH antigens. So what we do is we'll start to give it to the mom right before delivery, through delivery, and then after delivery for a little bit. And the idea is that this Rogam will chew up all of those antigens before her immune system ever sees them. Because um, if you can get rid of those, uh, those antigens artificially without her immune system seeing them, she doesn't get sensitized. So then you never actually get to that point of sensitization where she can attack the baby. So they can, it depends. Um, you can, if genetically it's possible, yes, they should give you Rogam. If there's another reason to test um, the fetus for something, you can actually test to see what blood type the fetus is. Um, so it kind of depends on what testing is necessary for the fetus. Um, obviously it's best to test. If the fetus happens to be negative as well, then it's best not to give it, it's super expensive. Um, but it kind of depends on what, what testing is necessary. So um, sometimes a person will lose so much blood that we have to transfuse blood, right? Some sort of an injury occurs, um, they lose blood volume and we have to transfuse blood. That means we're giving them blood from another individual to replenish their blood supply. Um, when that happens, it's or when we do that, it's possible for a cross reaction to occur. Obviously we don't want this to happen and we try and prevent this, um, but without appropriate testing, cross reactions can occur. What that means is that the plasma antibody that the person has in their blood finds its matching antigen on the blood cells that we just transferred to them. Okay, in that case, the antigens and antibodies bind and the blood again agglutinates or clumps. That starts to hemolyze or rupture the red blood cells. Um, and then you end up causing more of a problem in the person than you originally had with just the blood volume deficit. Um, again, this occurs if the donor and recipient are not compatible. Notice we don't say matching. The blood types do not have to match exactly. They just have to be compatible. Um, so we'll talk about that. Um, we'll talk about that in just a second and a little bit about like what that means. So what we do to make sure that the blood type we're giving someone is compatible is obviously test blood types, right? You test the recipient, the person, the patient's blood type, and then you obviously test the donor's blood type and make sure that they're compatible. If you don't have time, if you don't know the recipient's blood type or you don't have time to test that, O negative is the universal donor. But on like doctor shows, you always say, give me a bag of O neg, right? O neg or O negative is a universal donor. You can give O negative blood to anyone, 
regardless of their blood type, and you will not have any type of cross-reaction. Um, we're going to go through a lot of exercises in lab to talk about um, transfusions, but let's just kind of introduce the subject a little bit right now, because um, there's a few key caveats that are important to remember. So if this is the recipient, right, this is the patient that's getting blood, and say their blood type is A positive, okay, their red blood cells have what antigens? A, and what else? And RH. What antibodies do they make? B, right, anti B, because B is not self. So this is what this person's blood looks like, right? This is the body. This is where we're going to put the new blood in here. So this is the situation we're dealing with. When you transfuse blood, you don't transfuse the whole blood just as it was in the original person's body. We are not giving the antibodies. They can get filtered out. Okay, so when you transfuse blood, all you're worried about is the red blood cells that you're giving. Don't get confused, otherwise you'll never match anyone up. And it's like everybody always reacts with everybody. I'm not giving the donors antibodies. I'm only giving their red blood cells. Okay, so let's look at O negative, for example. What does O negative um, blood look like? What do the red blood cells look like? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> right? They don't have A, B, or R, H. What antibodies do they have? All of them, right? So we said O neg is a universal donor. I can give it to anyone, right? I couldn't give all of this because then these antibodies are going to find their antigens in a glutamate. But when you're donating blood, when you're giving blood to someone else, all you care about the donor is the red blood cell. These antibodies will get filtered out, and I'm just giving this red blood cell. So if I put a red blood cell that looks like this in this person's body, watch. There's the red blood cell. It doesn't have any antigens. Will this anti B find its antigen? No. So there's no, no glutination, no clumping, perfectly fine. No reaction occurs whatsoever. Um, if we put, let's look at AB negative blood. Um, what do their red blood cells look like? Do they have RH? No. Why? Okay, what antibodies do they have? <laughs> You're right, not right? They, but we're going to kind of think, though, they might. Who knows? Have they been sensitized? We don't know. If they've been sensitized, then they would have RH antibodies, right? We don't know. But do we care right now? No. Huh, because we're not transferring the antibodies anyways, right? We're just giving the red blood cells. Uh, but remember, just for your purposes, we will not have anti-RH antibodies unless they've been sensitized. I will try and trick you on a test with that question. Okay? So understand that. Um, I will not trick you. I will try and test your knowledge <laughs> on that concept. Um, so and let's see what would happen if we transferred AB negative blood to this person. Right? So we're only giving the blood cells. So the blood cells would have A and B antigens. Would that be a problem? Yes. Why? Good. Because this body has anti-B antibodies. So they're gonna find their antigen in a glutenate. So the new blood you put in there, you're just gonna rupture, and then that's gonna cause, um, it's gonna release a bunch of other chemicals that cause inflammation, you're just gonna cause worse problems, okay? So you could not give AB negative blood to somebody with A positive blood. So we'll work through a bunch of examples like that in lab today. Um, again, the key is just to remember that you're only giving the red blood cells, you're not giving the antibodies. And then when I'm figuring those out, I just draw them. Like exactly like I did right there. Um, I'll just take, like, I'll write out all the types of blood and then I'll draw it. Okay, what happened if I put this red blood cell? Is that okay or not? What would happen if I put this red blood cell? Is that okay or not? And it's really tedious, but that's a good way to do it in the beginning. Eventually, if you work with this type of stuff enough, it'll just be super easy. You'll just remember them. Um, but drawing them out is a really good way in the very beginning to make sure that you're okay with them and that you're understanding the concepts. Yes. Yes. After birth, when it's no longer being given, the body will start reproducing. Um, no. The antibodies, no, because the goal is that the Robian gets rid of all the antigen. So that, that the, that's what I mean. The, the baby's uh, red blood cells will start being reproduced with 
RH antigen on them, correct? Oh yes, the babies will always have, yeah. If the baby's positive, their red blood cells will always have the RH, yes. Okay. Yeah. showing um, how we actually test for blood type. Um, so let me like organize this for you. So this is like, we'll say, this is patient A, patient B, or I guess the A's and B's are gonna be confusing. Patient one, patient two, patient three, and patient four. Okay, so this is one, two, three, and four. This, so we would put like one drop of blood in here, here and here. So it's the same blood we're putting in each trough. And we just want to figure out what blood type is this person. So we put a drop of their blood here, and then this is the antibody that we're adding. Okay, so here we would add the anti-A antibody and see if the antibody found its antigen. If it clumps up, then it found its antigen. A antigen must be present. If it doesn't clump, Okay, so like here we add the anti-B antibody. Okay, so that didn't clump, so it didn't find its antigen. Here, um, remember I said D is the same as RH? So that's the anti-RH antibody. If it clumps, it found its antigen. Um, this is kind of hard to be a, a picture because sometimes the colors of like the antibodies you're adding are a little bit different. Um, it's really easy in person though because when you stir it, you can see if it's clumped at all. It'll be like jello. You know how jello like thickens on you? Um, it'll start to thick, not that thick, but it'll start to thicken like that a little bit. So if you can't see like, like these are obvious clumps, right? Um, but if you can't see them very well, then you can always stir it just to kind of check a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but let's go through these. Okay, so this one right here, this, does this look like it's clumping to you? Does this look like it's clumping? Does this look like it's clumping? Yes. Okay, so we said that this has the A antigen, it does not have the B antigen, and it has the RH antigen. So what blood type is this? A Excellent, good job. A positive, right? Because the red blood cells have A and they have RH. Um, does this look like it's clumping? No. Does this look like it's clumping? Yes. Does this look like it's clumping? This is tricky, right? Because it looks a little like dark here in the center. Um, so this would be one of them that me personally, I would wanna touch it. I would wanna stir it. If you compare it to this, then this is obviously much more clumpy, right? But this is kind of tricky. Um, technically, according to the book, that's not clumping. But again, I would stir it. I would wanna touch it before I made a final decision on what that one was, just because of the, the weird way the color is. Um, but technically it says that that clumped, so this has B, and this clumped, so it has RH. So what blood type is it? B positive, B positive right? It's got B, and it's got RH. Um, is this clumping? Yes. Is this clumping? Yes. Is this clumping? Yes. So what blood type? B positive. Right? They've got A, they've got B, they've got RH. Um, is this clumping? No. This? No. This? No. And I don't want to touch them. Um, but yeah, you're right. They're technically not supposed to be clumping. So what blood type is it? O negative. O negative, right? With no antigens. So hopefully that's okay with you guys. Um, if not, again, there's a video online and then we'll, we'll do samples of the blood type in lab tonight. So you'll be able to see kind of what I mean by it chunking up a little bit in the glute eating. And then we'll talk through different examples of blood transfusions because um, you'll have to, you'll have a couple of blood transfusion questions on your practical. So I want to make sure that you understand it. Um, and this is a concept that's, that really comes up a lot um, in practice. So if you have questions after tonight, let's make sure that you ask them. Okay. We're going to move on from red blood cells though.